Thanks so much for joining us um, at Sci-Fi Vision today. Uh, we really appreciate it. You're new with Invasion this season. Invasion operates with relatively few directors. Only three directors uh, did the whole 10 episodes. You've done four. No, You've four done four of the first five. Four, right? directors. four directors. It's not three directors, four directors, yeah. Um, and uh, you've done a, a ton of work in prestige television and you've done some Game of Thrones, but you're not a huge sci-fi guy. So what drew you to Invasion to want to direct these this big chunk of episodes? Uh, great dramatic storytelling. It's really good character driven drama. And so <clears throat> um, it's not really that all that different, to be honest with you. Once it's character driven drama, then in the background of um, uh, sci-fi, it doesn't feel all that different. Mm -hmm. um, it is very character driven. And I feel like uh, the first season in particular was was so heavy on character and, and really about the individual experience of the invasion without knowing what's going on. I think we're moving a little bit um, this season as the characters live with the invasion and get a little more sense of what's going on. Could you uh, talk about some of the things you're excited for uh, the story as the story progresses? Well, there is an element of propulsion, you know, uh, um, like for instance, the um, Malik family is on the run you know, uh, a lot of people are on the run. I mean, they're trying to save themselves. And there is a, uh, the dynamic is set such that there is a, um, an element of universality. Everyone can relate to uh, what's going on. It's a war out there and we need to survive and we need to unite. We need to um, uh, create a unified front. Whether or not we're successful in cre at creating a unified fr front, let's watch it and find out in season two. Um, the important thing is that, you know, there is a, uh, uh, an element we still continually uh, discovering about these characters. You know, these characters didn't peter out in the, uh, season one. They continue going, and they're very interesting in what's happening. You know, it's very interesting to see where uh, uh, the Malik family is uh, going. It's very interesting to see what uh, is happening with um, uh, Shamir Anderson's uh, Trevante Co. Um, uh, Shamir Anderson's character, Trevante Co. Uh, it's very interesting to see what's happening uh, with um, Jamila uh, at her home in UK, and then when she's on uh, um, on the go, when she's um, resolved to find uh, Casper and and all that stuff. So you know, I um, don't want to put too many spoilers out there, but you know, just want to make sure that you know we we watch the series and um, and continually engage with it, which I think we are. I think one of the interesting things is the way um, people remain the people they are. Anisha's kids uh, were kind of whiny nine and 10 year olds uh, at, in season one. And um, kids remain kids, even though there's an invasion, they still want their toy. They still, you know, wanted a milkshake. They still, Anisha's still having the, they didn't miraculously become little adults just because of the invasion. Or like Jamila and Monty are still dealing with that middle school, high school, like social drama that goes on. Um, and um, I know you find that mostly in the writing, but um, uh, do you, I, I don't know if you have these experience with kids or the way you draw that out of your young, some of the actors are young, some of them are a little older than the characters they're playing, right? Uh, how do you draw those, those preteen and teen dynamics out? Uh, by just sitting and listening and talking to them and engaging them. I'm, look, I'm father of three children. So I sort of come, sort of comes natural. You need to, you need to, you need to be able to, um, understand where they're coming from and also imbued in uh, the dynamic of the scene. Uh, and I have to say that these kids are amazing. I mean, amazing. Their attention span is incredible and uh, their capacity to understand what you're trying to convey is incredible. Uh, so it's not the huge uh, toil is like sitting there trying to uh, squeeze out the performance. No, uh, these kids are great. Uh, they understand where they need to be and they also uh, have capacity to listen uh, deeply. And sometimes the best direction comes from listen, just react, listen and react. And they're relatively early in their careers, most of them. They're not like a, um, oh, like a like a Dakota Fanning or a Brooke Shields who started acting at the age of like three or four. Some of these kids, um, you know, came a little bit late in life, nine or 10 years old <laughs> to acting, right? In the case of Aji, uh, um, I've known Aji, uh, uh, 
Robertson, uh, who plays Anish's uh, son. Uh, I think he was four or five when I directed him first time uh, on one of the primetime television shows. And so uh, uh, that kid was teeny, teeny, teeny when I directed him first. And then it was nice to see him now as a 10, 11 year old. He's really great. I enjoy in season two, we continue to see his, his, his anger with his mother, right? And some of that is just the regular anger of being a, you know, a, a teen and a tween. But some of it is anger over, you know, leaving the father last season. And uh, that kid is just seething in every scene. He is. But you know what's interesting is that um, it doesn't come out as an attitude. It comes out as a um, deeply rooted trauma. You know, which is so honest and beautiful. You know, there's some scenes there, and one needs to watch to see them. Um, the season, uh, where a lot of it comes from, such a quiet space, such a quiet place. Especially mm -hmm. when he's confiding to one of the characters about what he's experiencing uh, and how he's feeling. Beautiful, beautiful piece of acting. Yeah, he's incredible. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about the visuals of the show. You had a long career as a cinematographer uh, and then moved into acting. I think you still do both. Um, season one was filmed almost entirely in like shades of gray and black. And, and I think I see your perspective almost immediately in this season, uh, especially um, episode two kind of blew me the way, the way you shot Trevante in that scene. And um I wonder if you could speak a bit about bringing your visual sense to Invasion this season. Uh, I, to be honest with you, I don't um, I set out to uh, uh, dazzle. You know, I just basically uh, feel like, uh, you know, having having been a cinematographer for a long time, you kind of like sort of understand the visual dynamic from uh, intuitive perspective. So when you put up a camera, you discuss with director of photography, you discuss with the team, you discuss where you're going to put it, you discuss the lenses, you discuss uh, the lighting, you discuss the drama, you discuss what you're not going to light. You know, mm -hmm. so that um, Kevin Struthers was a cinematographer of the, on the episode um, who's very accomplished. And uh, so he understands uh, the dynamic of uh, showing and dynamic of not showing. The, 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 well, for me, very important element is the composition. And, you know, I set my composition uh, without fail always because uh, to me it's the most important tool that you have to convey the story, you know, and so uh, understanding where the lens is going to be, understanding where the shot is going to be, understanding geometry of the shot is very important, and you understand how that shot may parallel uh, the emotion uh, of the page. So, you know, you need to find visual parallel to what you're reading. And then you need to find the visual parallel, not just in the framing, but also in lighting and the camera movement, if there is a movement. And once, once you sort of like understand how it's going to work, then it becomes easy because it leads itself further along and you just follow it now. Uh, episode two uh, was one place where I really saw all of that. So we pick up four months later after the invasion, Trevante has moved home to Miami. And there's a scene where it opens with him with his entire family having a party. And, and that scene in much of that episode it has a very yellow kind of a, like um, that, I know that party's outdoors, but I, I thought, oh, wow, they're shooting Trevante really in yellow um, in this episode. I'm glad, I'm glad you actually uh, uh, noticed that, you know, we tried, we tried to separate the word, the worlds in um, specific color palettes. So, for instance, if uh, the UK portion of the uh, of the story is slightly bit colder, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little bit uh, blue gray, uh, maybe uh, a little bit more cyanish in its uh, values, then Miami, obviously being it's warm and uh, sunny, you know, would have something more of a sort of like a tobacco-ish feel to it, uh, warm, warmer uh, visual. So that you know, you basically when you watch the story without uh, lower third coming up informing where you are, which we don't do, but you know, if you do that, um, mm -hmm. what we usually do is we, we do it by way of how we are affecting the frames. Like for instance, like I already said, the UK would be a colder, Miami would be warmer, um, maybe Brazil would be much more colorful and so forth. Mm -hmm. I think we only have a little bit of time left. I do want to ask, um, we saw a very limited um, 
view of the aliens. The aliens are amazing, by the way, the way they um, the way they move. Um, but it was very limited, like any good horror alien show. You don't get to see a lot of the aliens at first. Um, I, you are challenged in these first four episodes with um, uh, uh, introducing, as people get to learn more about the aliens and see more about them, um, you are challenged with showing the aliens in different ways, is maybe a thing I could say without spoiling. Um, uh, did you know what you were getting into with that? Uh, it's mostly visual effects, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, all of the all of the all of the aliens and um, and entity uh, was created in visual effects. <clears throat> um, but you know, the concept art was uh, um, discussed, and we understood where we we're going to be taking it because you know there is an element of of without spoilers advancement. So mm -hmm. as one watches the show, one realizes uh, the scope and uh, uh, the difference uh, from when it starts and where it finishes. Yeah, we're moving to a place where each character is having their own experience of the aliens. Um, and um, the aliens are, they're using different tools in different situations, maybe, or the, the aliens use a different approach with different characters, maybe is something that I could say. Uh, and we're really starting to, um, we're still watching four separate stories, but I feel like you're starting to knit them together now in this first half of the season. There is an evolution, you know, and that evolution needs to be uh, watched. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We saw that, cro we had a crossover with Casper and Trevante, but mm -hmm. people are still separated by geography and languages. Um, I, I know that the plan when they shot season one, they had meant to shoot on location a lot and then COVID changed some things. Did you, did you shoot? Did you go on location? Uh, are you filming a lot of this in different countries? What we did is uh, we shot a UK portion in the UK, and then mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the story was shot in um, South Africa in Cape Town, and in which we needed to find um, locations uh, that would uh, look like British Columbia, like Oklahoma, like uh, Brazil, and um, Miami. Um, you know, so we were able to actually find uh, all of the locations in Cape Town, and I have to credit um, Simon Rogers, our uh, production designer who was able to uh, uh, narrow it all down with the locations team and uh, find great locations that when he presented to us you know we we were blessed you know to find everything we needed to find uh, in the one specific place mm -hmm. and you're shooting um at least in these first few less foreign language uh, um you know anisha spoke in farsi so much in season one and, and not entirely but you know she spoke to her um her husband and and she's more uh in English and uh uh Mitsuki is now not entirely with Japanese people um but you're still shooting some foreign language right and yeah. I mean, uh, Mitsuki, Mitsuki does have a scene in uh um uh, in which she speaks uh, Japanese uh, without mm -hmm. spoilers uh the um uh the scene with Anisha and the kids sometimes she uses her Farsi words you know and uh the kids, re the kids may, may not be um, very receptive to the idea of uh, speaking Farsi, but she insists that uh, they understand it because someday it might save their lives. I was thinking that there's a scene where Luke says, oh, my mom is teaching us Farsi. Mm -hmm. uh, in maybe episode four or five, he says that. And I thought, oh, this would allow her to communicate with her kids in a way that she's such a, she's still such a protective mother uh, oh my God. for better and sometimes for worse, right? I think for um, better. I mean, you know, look, she's a mom, and the universality of that character is understood across the entire world. We know what moms do; they protect their kids. Mm -hmm. And when you're a mom, you don't care if your kids hate you in that moment. Well, um, you know, you know I, mom sees the bigger picture. The kids are kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, um, yeah. So she's, uh, yeah, teaching them that Farsi. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for. I've only watched the first five. I'm kind of saving the back half. I don't like to binge a whole show in two days and then I have to, you know, try to stretch it out a little. So I've you're watched in, your you're in for three. <laughs> Keep on watching. <laughs> I'm saving myself, yeah. Um uh so I wanted to ask you a little bit uh about um that Oklahoma storyline. Um you've got a lot of um, well, not just in Oklahoma, but we've got a lot more military also in uh, we see a lot of military in the UK I think also and, and the US is driving you know as Trevante um, 
you know, he's dealing with that coming out of out of Afghanistan. Um, and um, this is my last question. He's he's coming out of Afghanistan and he's having like, that problem soldiers have have with coming out of a war zone and re-entering his family, and yet there's a war going on around him. And you're shooting a lot of military scenes. And um, I just wanted to ask, you know, before we leave about staging those, working with those, working with um, uh, any military advisors and the way, the way Trevante really, you know, um, is living that role as a, as a soldier. Sorry, so what's the question? Well, my question is about all those kind of military scenes, staging them and shooting them, and, you know, what kind of... Um, uh, maybe maybe uh, influences you have there that are that are helping to um, you know the military is coming off not great maybe in all of these episodes um, uh, and you know what kind of influences you got and and help you have to to pull all that together. Well, um, hmm. how do I do that without spoilers? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I mean, you must have some. You're working with uh, some advice. Some. Well, they're, they're, uh, they're obviously uh, uh, always advisors. You know, we don't want to uh, stage something that is not accurate. That's um, um, very important. Um, the thing is that, you know, we want to make sure that um, we're setting up military in such a way so that there's a question in um, Trevanta's mind. I can't. I can't talk about this. You know, it's 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 a well, spoiler. Thing. There's a question in everyone's mind in America if there's a spaceship in Area 51, right? <laughs> so. Um, okay. So then. So then, uh, if that's the case, then uh, generally speaking, invasion is very actual, um, or much more actual now than um, um, it was, say, two years ago. Mm -hmm. Because we have right. uh, we have we have different. Um, sense and uh, of reference now and it becomes ooh, relevant suddenly sure does so well um thanks so much our our um readers on our site are really looking forward to the the show coming back next week we've waited a long time uh and we appreciate you spending some time with us today thank you thank you i appreciate it bye